Okay. So today episode of the coaching and consulting business gold community show, which will be soon uploaded to our brand new Aurora Spot Digital uh, YouTube channel. And uh, hopefully it will be there in a matter of days. And today I would like to present Paul Tokizowu. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? You yeah. do. You're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. It's uh, uh, Tokizolu. So you, you, yeah. you're, you're closer than like fucking ninety percent <laughs> of people. So, so uh, I would like to present Paul Tokizolu, uh, who uh, is also a podcaster, uh, digital guy who is working uh, with uh, also with coaches and consultants. Have uh, very uh extended background in many different fields interested in the future of humanity his podcast name is the uh homo sapiens future or uh, <laughs> uh, beyond beyond homo sapiens and uh, i'm very glad to have you uh, here paul and uh, would like to know more because i have to admit I always uh, research the, the people I'm talking with. I'm always checking uh, their videos, their profiles, but <laughs> I didn't prepare enough because you, you have so many different <laughs> things. <laughs> so I, I couldn't uh, have the uh, full perspective of, uh, of what's your uh, thing. So we will have interesting talk uh, today and uh, I would like to first ask you, how did you start this uh, online journey? How did you decide to go online, to start uh, presenting in front of uh, online audience? And how did you start this thing? So first of all, thanks for having me, man. I'm stoked to be here, especially in the early days of your podcast, because when this thing's, I, I know when this thing's, take it over the world and it's a you know massive podcast in a, in a couple of years people go back to these early episodes <laughs> to see like what it was like when you got started and i'm blessed to be here at the beginning seriously, <laughs> seriously the I, the first. <laughs> i'm stoked man i love being on like the first ones because <laughs> i know people like you who are smart as smart as hell are gonna be like making some waves for real uh, but anyway i digress so about uh, I'm actually in the in the army for the I'm in the United States Army and I've been in the army now for about five years and I'm getting out really soon I'll be out in like the next couple of months um, but when I first joined and got onto active duty it, it was very like I was very clear that like okay this is not a great option for me this is not where I want to be do with my life not just like the military but just like the nine to five job in general you know having like an office job where you're where you because the type of like when I, when I tell people I'm in the army they're like oh man that's cool you fucking shoot guns all day and you you go out in the woods like no no like that's the majority of the military in any country for the most part like it, it's it's mostly like a nine to five job but I wear combat boots and a uniform fortunately, or unfortunately i miss it this part of my life <laughs> good <laughs> yeah because of my studies and my university i miss it the, the army oh man it's, now it's, it's uh, not uh, already it's not mandatory in our country <laughs> yeah i think i think it's okay <laughs> um, but i mean i'm very grateful for the opportunities that i've had like i was able to live in europe for three years being stationed in germany so that was awesome yeah. and obviously they've supported me financially as i get my businesses off the ground and stuff like that but yeah so about two years two, a little over two years ago now i realized like man i have to do something else like i can't i can't just go from this army career into another like nine to five corporate job like this is not good for me this is not what i want to do it's not good for my mental health it's not good for my goals in life i don't feel fulfilled so i was like i need to do something and i was getting into learning like learning from like tim ferris and robert kiyosaki or joe rogan and all these people who are doing other things on the internet doing podcasting writing books starting online companies stuff like that and i was learning about it 
And I was just learning that it was a thing. You know, I didn't, I didn't know that it was a, a thing that you can do, that you could have a business that is online. You know what I mean? Like a little over, like two and a half years ago. Actually, I read this uh, Kiyosaki thing many years ago, but firstly, I didn't understood it correctly. And I, I believe it's all about investing. And uh, many, many years later, I uh, understand that it's about making your thing in the and uh, making creating value to the world and not just uh, extracting <laughs> so basically it took me a lot of time to realize but uh, but yeah i i totally understand your willingness to to stay out of the corporate world i yeah i, I always believe that i also that i am also outside of the corporate world as a scientist but later on i realized that science job is also nine to five job <laughs> even if it's more free to do you you can do whatever you you want but at the end you you have to you know, to present your stuff in front of the upper levels you you also have to to follow instructions and uh, actually it's not the same as uh, building your own business no, it's really not. And at the end of the day, you're working for someone else. And it's not, it, you're gonna have way more freedom and way more possibility if you're able to create something that is uniquely your own. And that's really where the, the massive value that you can give to the world uh, comes from when you tap into like, what it is that you can add, you know what I mean? Um, so I kind of was starting to think about all this stuff. And I knew I had to do something because I was going crazy and I was feeling like I was trapped and I was losing time and I knew that I should be doing something, but I didn't know what it was. And I, I had no skills back then, like two and a half years ago. I had, I had no skills. I studied philosophy in college. Uh, I was in the military. So like I, di I didn't have like a career before, before this, you know, I didn't have like a a normal job type of thing. I just had the military, which was really just office work. So like, but, um, but I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I've, I've been involved with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu now for eight years. And it's one of my favorite things. So I was like, well, I can talk about Jiu Jitsu. I can talk. So I, I started podcasting. I started a podcast called the Matrix BJJ podcast about Jiu Jitsu. And I, it sucked at first. It was total dog shit. And I like, I was terrible. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, and that lasted for a while. And I just practiced and I just did it all. T I did it every a couple times a week. And I would interview my friends from jujitsu and I'd have them on the show and we would talk. And, uh, and then progressively over the course of a year, I got much better. I started to reach out to like bigger names in the jujitsu world. And I had some some pretty big names on the show like Dean Lister and Clark Gracie and some other people in the jiu-jitsu community. Uh, oh, and then we, we started a YouTube channel too with a friend of mine and I started to learn social media to market the show, to get people to listen to it. I started to learn how to like run a Facebook page, run an Instagram page. I was doing Facebook ads like to promote the podcast, which is a terrible idea but uh but i was doing it i was like set, doing like facebook ads sending traffic to my podcast pages and shit like that and it didn't make any fucking sense but uh but i learned and i made a ton of mistakes like doing facebook ads like on my own stuff and just learning how it all works and making a shit load of mistakes. We are all learning from mistakes. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the, that's the whole the thing. That's the best way to learn. <laughs> that's it. You learn from mistakes. Um, unless it's in something like real estate, then you might want to learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, you, you blend both. You learn from your own mistakes. You learn from other people's mistakes yeah. and so on. And you get better over time. But, uh, but yeah, so then after, while I was doing the show, a few people that I had had on as guests started to reach out to me and say like, hey, I really like what you're doing on social media and you seem to be getting pretty good at it. Can, uh, would you like to work for me and run my social media pages? And that's when it clicked for me and I was like, oh shit, oh, I get it. Like, I, I don't have to make money from the podcast. I can make money from the connections that I'm making on the podcast. And then I work for those people 
or I work for people that they know and I run their social media pages or I help them out with Facebook ads or, or whatever, you know what I mean? And that's how I first started making money online. I started a digital, uh, digital marketing agency that was centered around helping uh, people in the jujitsu and kind of martial arts community. And I, I, was, uh, I was helping them run their Facebook ads, Facebook pages, Instagram, YouTube channels, all that kind of stuff. And I, I did that for a while. And now lately I've kind of moved more into like doing consulting for, for marketing and stuff like that. But, 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 uh, but yeah, about a, about a year ago though, I kind of shifted gears altogether uh, away from the jujitsu world because I, I realized that like I have way a lot more interest that I wanted to be able to talk about and that that was like my real passion. Like I love jujitsu. I love doing jujitsu, but I was like, man, I can't just like talk about jujitsu all day. I fuck, I like, I like doing jujitsu. You know what I mean? And I was like, man, I can't just like talk about it for the next 20 years. Cause I was like, I need something that I can talk about every fucking day that I'm really passionate about. I have all these other interests like philosophy, science, religion, uh, human evolution, psychedelics, all this crazy stuff that I'm into. And, uh, and I was like, man, I need to talk about that. So I started the Beyond Homo Sapien podcast. And it, that's kind of where the show is going these days is I now I've been doing it a little over six months now, this new podcast. And uh, now it's a blog and a YouTube channel as well. And I'm moving towards talking about human evolution and stuff like the law of attraction or again, like psychedelics or psychic abilities that are developed that we people are becoming more interested in and really just like examining like what's happening right now because we're seeing like AI and virtual reality coming out and making this, this appearance on the world stage. And it's happening at the same time as people are becoming more interested in like spiritual awakening and esoteric practices and and all this, you know, kind of spiritual stuff. And if you look at like the Renaissance or the industrial age or any time where there's like a gigantic new, like golden age of mankind, this same cycle repeats itself. Yeah, where there is always uh, some kind of changes in the spiritual side of humanity when there is a technological uh, breakthrough. Yes. And, and uh, today, these days, it seems that it's the same. And uh, many people are interested in, uh, at the same time, in technology advancement and in the spiritual uh, alignment and uh, well-being. So uh, your podcast is really a unique combination of, of these two sides of our uh, uh, human interests and a uh, very, very interesting mix of, of all of these stuff. So actually, you started uh, six months ago. And you already have a lot of traction. Well, thanks. And like I said, I mean, I've been, I've been podcasting now for like almost like two and a half years, but this new show is, you know, I came out like six, six or seven months ago or something like that. And, uh, and yeah, so I took all the mistakes from the last one <laughs> and I saw everything that I was doing wrong. And now I'm kind of channeled that into this new show. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, this new one has been doing pretty well over the course of now like seven months or so, uh, but it's built off of the year and a half of mistakes and total bullshit that I yeah. was messing it's around always with. more than, than what's visible on the screen. Oh, yeah. Always. We all have a lot of experience that that's never will be oh, yeah. in front of the space, but, but if you see somebody quite successful in building his things in very short period of time. Almost every uh, time he has a lot of background of many trials and, and errors uh, before that. Uh, yes. So uh, you, uh, you told about your uh, Beyond Homo Sapiens podcast uh, uh, fields. Uh, you are mixing your own uh, thinking with interview of uh, interesting people. Uh, and uh, what do you think is the, the most Im important direction in which you would like to grow your uh, podcast? What, what field of, uh, of searching of, uh, of, new, of new things you, you believe will, will be the most uh, 
interesting and at the same time probably the most exciting uh, area to, to follow. Is it uh, uh, spirituality? Is it futurism? Is it uh, business uh, combination with, with all these things? Because I think that it's the, it's the linking of all of them, actually. I think that that's kind of my, uh, I don't know, unique message, or maybe that's like what I can contribute or add to the world is because I feel like there's not that many people that I've found. I mean, I'm, I'm finding more and more people like this as time goes on. And as I do the show, more of these people seem to pop up, which is amazing and i love it because that's that's what i want to th those are the type of people that i want to have on the show and stuff like that but is uh showing how they're all linked i think that that's what people miss is they think that like spiritual development is like its own thing over here and then technology and science is its own thing going off in another direction and that then fitness and health and holistic living is another direction mm -hmm. and maybe talking about stuff like psychic abilities or religion is an entirely different thing and they're all separate but actually they're all connected and the more that you learn about them the more that you see all these things or business you know people like let's examine that for just as an example to illustrate what i'm talking about here Let's talk about like the business world these days. We're seeing more and more people in today's world want to go into this route of becoming like a digital nomad, working online, uh, not having to go to an office every single day, being able to do that thing that they are, that is uniquely their own, you know, that like we were talking about before, that starting a business that is from their heart and that they're really passionate about and not having like a fucking nine to five job that they're going to every single day. They want to work online. They want to travel the world. They want to do all that kind of good stuff. You know what I mean? So that kind of movement towards working remotely and becoming a digital nomad, uh, you might think that's totally separate from spirituality, but actually they're totally the same. Because what we're trying to do here, when you are becoming a digital nomad, you're trying to find that like self-realization of you, of you and like what your kind of soul, what your spiritual being wants to do in the world, if that makes sense. And you want, what do you want to do? You want to go and you want to explore the world. You want to connect with people from all over because you are a... A adventurous soul perhaps you're a you're a spiritual being that we doesn't all want are. <laughs> yes exactly exactly you want to have this like experience here and if you study these kind of more esoteric spiritual teachings that is kind of where they are going that's what they that's what the teaching is is that we are all these spiritual beings that incarnated here on the earth to have a experience, to have like an adventure of sorts. You know what I mean? So the idea that you wanna be more free in your job to be able to go out and explore the world and you're like, man, I don't wanna to go to the same office every single day, nine to five, that's boring. And you're like, man, I wanna have a, an experience here. I wanna have an adventure. You might think that that doesn't have anything to do with spirituality, even if you're like an atheist or someone who doesn't even believe in any of this stuff. But actually, it's a very, if you actually examine what these kind of spiritual teachings are getting at, it's a very spiritual thing that you're doing of going out there and exploring the world, which is expanding your beliefs about other people and increasing your empathy about other cultures and you're learning about how other people view the world and all this good stuff that's a very spiritual thing that you are doing and the two are connected the two are linked to, to first discover what's inside your your soul before uh, going out and uh, yes presenting your uh uh, value to the world and actually it's it's self-realization and self-discovery process uh, before uh, anything uh, you can do for, for this uh, so-called laptop lifestyle and so on it, it's not about just uh, 
for getting office work and going to travel. It's about discovering what what you are passionate about. And for me, <laughs> I I followed all all this uh, spiritual uh, traveling, uh, as we can say it. And, uh, and I was amazed that most of of my progress and advancement is a, a result of exactly of uh, working on my inner inner things, working on my uh, spirituality. I, I'm not. I'm a, a actually not a believer in any non-scientifically uh, uh, proven things, but, but I believe that as uh, thinking human beings, most of our uh, expression of, uh, uh, of outside uh, things is a uh, uh, direct reflection of our mind. And what's inside our mind uh, dictates our, uh, uh, our movements into the social world. So basically, this is the first thing we should do and uh, many people still don't realize that they should first work on themselves and, and not on, on some, uh, uh, how to say, <clears throat> on some manner that is uh, exact as, as uh, the other people do. Everybody is different personality and he, should, uh, he or she should find their own way of, uh, of doing things. There's not possibility to two people to do uh, the, uh, one thing the same way and uh, achieve the same results. So every time some, some people teach about methodology, about uh, some uh, practice, how to follow these steps, you should take these things, but uh, think with some angle of perspective that you should find your way around, not, not directly copy-pasting uh, anybody else. And yeah. it's a, a big awakening uh, for, for people to, to find that this is much more important than uh, any other uh, skills. Even social skills, even technical skills, they are much less important than uh, spiritual skills. Yes, exactly. And when you say spiritual skills or spirituality, people automatically think of like God or some sort of religion or something like that. And it's actually, that's not at all how it should be viewed, in my opinion, because honestly, I'm with, I'm, I study religion quite a lot. And I'm very interested in religion. And I, I was raised in the Christian church. Uh, I was I was involved in like the fundamentalist Christianity till I was like 17, and then I left because I started reading the Bible and I realized that it didn't it, it didn't match what they were teaching, <laughs> it didn't make any sense, uh, so I left. But I've always been very interested in religion, and when you take like a I don't know I don't want to it sounds like an oxymoron, but when you take like a scientific approach to religion and you start to dive into okay, where did this teaching come from? What are they actually trying to say? What exactly is are they getting at here? You see that actually it can be used in science in some degree. The two obviously are a bit separate, but like kind of what I'm saying is oftentimes if you examine where scientific theories come from and the basis of kind of a modern science, they oftentimes have their roots in the same sorts of teachings as the religions themselves. And they kind of all started at the same origins with these kind of philosophical metaphysical questions about the world that all kind of went off like for example isaac newton studied alchemy and and like i know that <laughs> yeah and he, he studied crazy, he was crazy about uh, yes alchemy, about astrology about all these things and at yes. the same time uh, making the groundbreaking discovery. yes he was more he spent more of his day studying alchemy and like channeling spirits than he did physics and somehow in his genius mind he was able to uh, not connect the dots or 
maybe not even connect the dots, maybe just say, maybe get inspiration from one to feed the other. And he was, he was searching for, because ultimately what these great thinkers are after, like whether it's Einstein, Newton, Galileo, any of these people, they're trying to say, what is going on around here in this, this reality that we're experiencing? Like, what is all this craziness? What is this stuff? What's going on here? Actually, they, if you follow how Einstein discovered his theory of relativity, uh, he also uh, stepped on the <clears throat> background of many philosophers li like Karl Popper, uh, many different people who, who only uh, present their philosophical constructions. For me, philosophy, spirituality are probably the, the cornerstones and the background of uh, actual science theory. So we as humans, we, we produce our thoughts based on our beliefs so there is no theory which is which uh, didn't start on uh, belief hypothesis first so yeah that's how we operate so i i'm uh, even uh, have more uh, more connections not to all different fields of science but directly to neuroscience actually yes. spirituality and neuroscience can be interconnected to the level that they are uh, one and the same subject. Probably not many people teach it this way, but actually it's, uh, they are the same. Yes, they, they very much are. And, peop and this is kind of what I'm talking about when I say like these, these things always, it's a repeating cycle that we've seen in the industrial age, the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, uh, ancient Greece or ancient Egypt, or all these times where these spiritual practices merge with the new technology and together they create this huge this huge like golden age of the civilization for a couple hundred or thousand years or what have you and you know and it's a new kind of era of mankind that we step into and it's it's usually happens when these things merge like for example with the renaissance the the spiritual teachings that were brought back from the Crusades, uh, for example, the Hermetic philosophies that kind of came back from modern day Syria, those were brought back by the Crusaders and they somehow ended up making their way up to Florence in Italy and the, Medi the Medici family got a hold of them and they were like, oh my God, this is fucking crazy. And that's, that's where these ideas about the kind of power of the mind all originate. Like we hear about the law of attraction a lot these days. Um, it comes from that. It comes from these teachings that were brought back to, to Italy and distributed from there uh, by these, by the crusaders. And that those, that kind of reintroduction of these ancient teachings that had been living in the Middle East, uh, unbeknownst to kind of the Western world, these hap this reintroduction happened at the same time when these advances in technology started to form. And the two influenced each other because what happened was these Renaissance thinkers began to, to examine these, these philosophies that were coming back from places like Egypt and they started to say, wait a second, I have power. My mind is capable of so much. My mind can influence the world around me. And oh my God, I have this insane ability inside of me. Let me channel that into these new technologies, into creating these new ways of having a civilization and all of this good stuff. And then that's and that's just that's just one example, but the same happened in the Industrial Revolution with with Andrew Carnegie was into this stuff. Henry Ford. This is what Napoleon Hill writes about in uh, Think and Grow Rich. His whole teaching is around this same concept of like the power of the mind, the power of the human spirit, and all of this good, this, all this craziness. This that, book is, is kind of a, of a bible for for the whole generation of entrepreneurial uh, yes. minds. Uh, but probably I believe that uh, in the past, all these 
spiritual practices and beliefs, people really believe in magic and that it's uh, something that's outside of, of our mind and something that's the the world is happening on the people. But probably for the first time in human history now, we understand that this uh, spirituality is inside us and at the same time we see its power. So we have different perspective at this epoch. People from all uh, times uh, were interested in uh, spirituality, but for the first time we understood that science and spirituality can be connected more, more in depth. And so how do you believe all these uh, changes of, of our perception of the world will continue further and uh, probably what is, is your uh, thinking of the future of humanity? Do you believe, it, believe in, the, uh, in the good future that uh, we will all thrive and sustain? Do you believe there will be some uh, uh, risky pitfalls uh, coming uh, in front of humanity? Because there are always uh, these two, two sides uh, in, in war with each other. We, we have at the same time forces that are dragging us down and at the same time forces that want to uh, to help us evolve. I'm sure you, you believe in human evolution will be successful, but <laughs> at the same time, if we think about why we are not seeing other extraterrestrial beings, probably they they hit uh, some some wall in their evolution. <laughs> this is one one possible theory. Yes, it is the best explanation, but it's, it's also theory. What do yes. you think about the future of humanity? So I think that we are right now emerging into this new definition of what it means to be a human being on the earth. And it's a scary time and it's frightening to us because like, let's use uh, therapy, for example. I've been, I've been seeing a therapist now for about two years to help with mental health stuff that I've been dealing with. And when you first start therapy or any sort of healing process, the first couple of months of that healing process are just to identify the problem and bring the real problems to the surface of what it is that you need to fix. So it might be stuff with your family, might be stuff with like an ex-girlfriend, might be stuff with some sort of mental thing that you're working with, like an anxiety disorder or depression. Maybe you hate your job and you, you can't admit that to yourself or whatever. You know, there's, there's some issue that you're trying to bring to the surface of, and that is hard work and it's scary and it's, it's depressing and you, you cry, you shed tears and you go through this process of bringing the problem to light. And then once the problem is there, then you can say, aha, found you. I, I got you, problem. It's my, it's the thing that happened to me when I was 10 years old. It was that, you know, that car accident that I was in. It still traumatizes me today. And I thought I was over it, but nope, I'm still not over it. You know what I mean? And you're, you're like, oh man, you're, you're staring the problem right in the face. And then you're like, okay, let's get to work. Let's deal with this problem. Let's heal. Let's move past this. And let's have a better future. So that's what's happening right now with the internet at the species level. We're exposing all of these fucking problems. We're looking around and we're saying, oh my God, the politicians are bought and paid for. The corporations are buying out all the politicians in various countries all over the world oh man, you know, or, or like, wow, they're, they're putting shit in our food, not in Bulgaria. Bulgaria has some good food, but uh, you know, in the United States, they're like, man, they're poisoning the food. The food that we eat is garbage. It's crazy. Or we're looking at pollution around the world and we're saying, oh my God, we're polluting the world. What the fuck? This is crazy. Global warming is happening. Or you know, like climate change is happening. That polar ice caps are melting. Oh my God, we're, we're, we're fucking up. You know, you know, all this kind of stuff is coming to the surface. Uh, yeah, it's now much easier to, to spot these things. Uh, yeah. To, to bring and, it to attention, but, but they are still there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know about them, they are there. So these are problems that 
to the yes. results uh, from from our generation, from further generations, yeah. probably. So, and I think they will. That's that's what I'm getting at. Like, I think they will. We're just going through a very scary time right now, just like you would in your own personal journey if you were diving deep into your own like personal demons and skeletons in the closet and that kind of stuff. It's like like, for example, like governments have always been taking money from someone. You know what I mean? Like politicians have always been taking money from people they shouldn't be taking money from. Kings and queens throughout history have always oh, been doing history. like, yeah, under the table deals with some foreign ruler that they probably shouldn't be communicating with. You know what I mean? Like it's just a, it's always been the case. And like, and nowadays, or ter like terrorism, for example. Terrorism has fucking always been here in some form or another. Somewhere in the world, there are terrorist groups. It's not a, it's not a new thing for there to be terrorists out there or what, whatever. But it's just nowadays we're seeing all these problems come up and everyone's like, oh my God, the world's ending. But no, guys, this has always been happening. The world is actually safer today and way better than it ever has at any point in human history. Yeah, exactly and what, uh, what I uh, yeah. like to, to hear from you, that yeah. people say it, really the, the world is safer and better place now, even oh, yeah. if we see much more bad cases, bad uh, things happening, but it's it's, because we, we see it better, we have uh, bigger awareness of what's happening in the whole world. Yeah, we can't solve these problems if we don't know what they are. And it's going to take, we're going through a period right now of, of exposing all of the problems all over the world that have always been there. And then we're going we're gonna to find the solution. I, I know we will. There's fucking millions and millions of people. I mean, there's billions of people in the world, but there's, there's millions and millions who are like-minded as you and I, who are thinking of problems to these solutions, who are coming up with business ideas or scientific ideas or spiritual ideas or whatever to try to solve these problems. And it takes time. It takes, it just takes some, I know so many people, because now I'm getting involved with interviewing people in these, in these different fields and getting involved in all of them and starting to know people like there, there's so many people out there who are working on solutions to these problems all over the world and they're just getting they're getting started they're still in the early days because it takes time to create a business yeah, it takes time to, it's not uh, one single mind to solve no. a huge problem yeah. exactly it, it takes time thousands of people working from a given direction and now we have the possibility to cooperate with each other from all over the, the world. As uh, we are speaking now from <laughs> the two sides of the earth, so everybody else can collaborate with, uh, with everybody. In yeah. the past, it was very, very difficult to find uh, anybody who is uh, like-minded with you, who you can talk in, in uh, similar topics, but that was not the case. But I have some other concerns uh, about the future of humanity. I, I'm also like you, believer of uh, the good future of humanity, of our evolution, because actually four billions of years, the, the life evolved and uh, didn't disappear despite uh, many different uh, situations here on our planet. Oh so yeah. When we are on the top of evolution, why the hell we, we should uh, uh, dissolve our uh, uh, what we achieve? So I believe we will uh, handle all these problems, but maybe some bigger problems will arise. And probably you think about uh, artificial intelligence, but this is only the one big problem. The other big problem I think is we have many applications, many technologies, and including the, the entire artificial intelligence uh, thing that will help us do the, the regular day-to-day -day stuff. So we will have much less duties, much uh, less responsibilities. Cars will drive without us. Yeah. Someday uh, artificial intelligence will write our scientific papers. Do you believe that this will be a, a drag on our evolution? We will become uh, less, uh, we will stop thinking when we have so many tools that can uh, help us. 
for example, if you have a, a robot in the kitchen who can uh, cook for you, <laughs> you will stop yeah. thinking about cooking. You will not be a good uh, cook. If, if we have something to think in, instead of us, probably the, the entire humanity, and I'm not uh, talking about the, the top performers, but uh, the average level, I, be, I, I see that it decreased the student time I'm talking uh, later several years in the in the high school. Their their level of competence is going only down, and <laughs> well, yeah. I believe they will hit the the rock bottom. But, but still, don't see this happening. So probably this is the biggest problem, not not the AI itself. Yeah, I get what you're saying, and uh, personally, I think that it will. We like I'm a big believer in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and I feel like that model makes a ton of sense for what you're talking about. And what I mean is that it's the idea that people go through these stages of kind of their, their what they need at that time is dictated by you know their or their, what their needs dictate kind of their their desires and their wants and their personalities and all sorts of stuff like that. So, for example, you know, if you are someone who is still struggling to pay your bills and buy food and pay for your house, you are not going to necessarily be able to focus your mind on spiritual development. You know what I mean? Because you're you might be able to a little bit, but predominantly you're like, nope, I got to make money so I can pay my bills and feed my family and survive. You know what I mean? So once we ascend beyond that level collectively and we don't have to worry about that stuff as much anymore, which is personally, I think that's kind of where we're headed is we're headed kind of to this new age of abundance where we have uh, better access to food and work and everything like that is kind of taken care of to a degree, I think it's going to open the doors for this kind of new era of exploring the highest level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is kind of this spiritual development uh, or personal fulfillment kind of level that we're going to, I think, collectively ascend up to. And now you're talking about... I also think that when most people find ways to, uh, to, to not uh, work nine to five jobs and to focus on something from their homes, from their places which they travel, they will have to uh, much more time to think and to connect with, with each other. But yep. this for sure will not be the whole population of the planet. This will be only probably 10, 20% of the people will, will be at this level, self-exploring, self-thinking uh, and helping each other. Many other people will still be on the, the level, give me a job, give me food, uh, I want uh, work-life uh, balance. They, they yeah. the, the old-fashioned way, do you think these people can, can somehow be... Uh, included in this uh, new yes movement. yes and the the here's the thing man here's the what is like the last kind of step that we need before we can uh, kind of ascend collectively into this new era of prosperity so we have to change the education system around the world that's the nail in the coffin of the kind of old way of doing things and that's actually what i'm working on doing i have a team that is working on using artificial intelligence to revolutionize education and we're just one team of many there's there's many people i've connected with over the past year who are working on a similar project and that's kind of what i'm talking about is we're seeing collectively our, our collective consciousness, our collective brain is seeing that we need to make a change in the education system. And that is what is happening all over the world from, again, it just takes time, but I, I know for sure, I've already, like I said, I've already connected with many people all over the world who are working in this direction. And I can only imagine there's thousands more working in this direction that I'm, I'm the more you learn about how the new advances in education the more encouraging it gets to just see what's happening all over the world in a variety of 
projects that again will just take time. It's a grassroots movement to change education that just will take a, hell, a you know a decade maybe to really make this happen. But that's what needs to happen because I totally understand what you're saying and the reason why these kids and younger folks are not stepping into this ability, this this level of prosperity that they could exist in is because they don't know about it. They aren't educated in, in this stuff. They aren't thinking properly. They're taught to think in a box. They're put in this fucking box that teaches them what to think and how to think and what they should be doing with their lives. And they're only taught this one way of doing things. And it's a bullshit way to do things. It's, it's the old way of going about life and, and so on. And uh, it does- I realized from my personal experience that it took me more than 10 years to to realize how the the whole world world works, how how I can participate in in this new reality, it took me a lot of time of self uh, learning and self uh, noting of of these things I, I learned from school. I learned a lot for uh, basic science, which I'm very grateful for this, but nothing for uh, psychological, for uh, uh, entrepreneurial, for spiritual part. This is everything uh, I learned by myself, but this was because I have uh, such a predisposition for learning. Many people yeah. don't don't get it. And this is because of the basic school education, even the the basic levels. And if if these things that you you uh, tell that will happen in the next couple of years, if if they start to be more commonly used then the next generation will definitely be many, many times uh, more productive and more efficient than we are. But uh, for people who are old generations, they, they will not participate in, in this change most probably. But we have to focus on the, the, the new generations of people. The, I'm, I'm very excited and surprised how many young entrepreneurs there are. Yes. Kids uh, 16, 18 years old who, who gets the things uh, perfectly aligned uh, as some people can uh, do these things for many uh, decades and tens of years, but they know these things and they find it from uh, the internet. They find it from YouTube. From yep. So I think here's- it's our responsibility to, to, to help and educate them. I totally agree, man. And it's those people that we need who will invent the solutions to these problems. And here's the thing, man. I think people are inherently creative. I think that kids are born creative and then we, we educate it out of them and we, we poison their minds in a way to be sheep and to just follow the herd and fit in a box. And but people naturally are creative, I think, and that if you allow them to be creative and if you give them ways to create, they might not necessarily want to open a business because not everyone necessarily wants that, and that's cool. They don't need to like have their own company, but they're going to be in that creative, critical thinking state of mind all over the world in all sorts of places in whatever field they end up going into they're going to maintain that creativity that curiosity to go out and learn more and develop this that's what we need honestly is we need schools and institutions that instill in people this like love of learning and this desire to always just be curious and learning more and exploring more and creatively thinking and if you get a couple you know, 100 million people or a billion people who are creatively thinking and inventing new solutions to these problems all over the world, it's going to disappear quickly. These problems are going to go away fast. Mm. Because I guarantee you, if we get a billion people and we teach them to think creatively and critically, and we allow them to live their full potential, and we give them all these fucking tools that we have today on the internet, we teach them how to do marketing. We teach them all the way these things work. We teach them how to how to code artificial intelligence. Like that's the problem with artificial intelligence is there's not that many people in the world who know what it is and how to do it because it's not taught in schools. Kids aren't taught how to code. 
they don't understand this how this stuff works it's just a small group of people at facebook or google or whatever no it will change even if my country there are already schools where artificial intelligence is uh to, to to yeah exactly and that's the thing that's what we need it doesn't it's not scary ai isn't scary if everyone hypothetically knew how to code and artificial intelligence or not even code they just knew like what it was they knew how it works they knew the ethical concerns in the same way with with driving you know what i mean like hypothetically if there were only a hundred people at google who really understood how to drive a car and the rest of us were just like i don't know no one taught me anything about this but i'm gonna give it my best shot you know that yeah there'd probably be a lot more traffic accidents but you educate people you teach them how to drive you make sure they know what they're doing and you teach them how a car works and you teach them safety on the road and all that kind of stuff and like that's the type of stuff we need for artificial intelligence and everything virtual and reality all this only stuff a tool. and even if it becomes much more powerful it, it still is a tool for our society yeah you're, you're absolutely right that uh, the, the thing that we should uh, empower in people is exactly creativity it, it's not uh, necessarily to be uh, coaching and consulting business of course this is something we specialize but actually in any type of job where you put all your creativity it's uh, something uh, with great value to, to humanity and at, at the moment there are a lot of creative people but if we 10x them 100x them, what, what uh, can happen to, to the world it, there is the other theory where uh, uh, it's a more positive belief for the future of humanity when uh, people believe total abundance will happen very soon the uh, you know the theory about the what was the name uh, which Ray, Ray Kurzweil invented this uh, term singularity yeah which yeah, yeah. can happen soon but uh, this is also probably an extreme point but uh, but we get the point and uh, I also think we can participate in in all code uh, all this uh, uh, movement uh, Basically, uh, what I would like to, to ask you more is uh, how do you think uh, you can implement this, your philosophy, your uh, uh, global thinking for the future with uh, your business operations? I know that you are focusing on exactly on people, coaches, uh, consultants who are in the spiritual sphere who would like to uh, empower the people uh, with their uh, own uh, uh, enlightenment and uh, how do you implement your uh, thinking with your uh, capacity to help and evolve society so i think that learning these digital skills is so important because again there's so many people out there so many like spiritual coaches and healers and all these people who are uh they have a great message and they have a wonderful potential to help people and they have helped people they always they oftentimes have a like some clients that they've worked with who they've been helping and who have gotten really positive experiences from them uh like for example someone that i'm helping is uh he helps people kind of unlock their like psychic gifts their psychic abilities and helps them to understand that process of psychic powers and all that kind of stuff and you know you might not believe in that kind of stuff but the important thing is that he does and the people he works with they do and they get benefit from that they understand themselves better they have greater capacity to think creatively like we were saying they feel more empowered and, and so on so if that message can reach the world then they he could you know really impact a lot of people who might have questions who might be confused about their th these gifts these these things that are emerging these you know these like whatever you want to call it like these spiritual awakening kind of phenomena things that people are, have questions about people want to learn more so if that message of like education around psychic 
abilities, for example, if that can reach the masses, it can help a lot of people. And then that can help to spur on the, uh, the evolution and the, the growth of the species and so on. So, so what I, but here's the thing is that oftentimes these folks who are really deep down the rabbit hole of these topics, they don't, they, they haven't had time to learn Facebook ads or digital marketing or podcasting or all this stuff that could help them to grow their business and reach more people. And oftentimes a lot of them have this, this, kind of mistaken belief around money. They think that like money is not a great thing or they think like, oh, if I'm making a ton of money from this spiritual practice that I'm somehow like misusing this gift, you know, cause money is the root of all evil and all that kind of craziness that you get taught in these religions. And, uh, but there's a lot of folks who are like really fucking uh, kind of spiritually inclined who think that way, who think like, oh man, I can't be making a ton of money from this because of X, Y, and Z. And here's the thing is they don't, they don't understand that money is how you help more people. You know, you need uh, money. The, the value of your services and the perceived value and the real value. And yeah. If, if you don't charge anything, people see as there is no value and uh, yes even if you give them all all your uh, stuff all your uh, great uh, things you you have they will not realize the value if they didn't pay i i just realized for for myself in many different situations because if you download a, a film or a course from from online for free you didn't uh, pay this much attention is as if you bought this thing uh, yeah i totally am with you man right. and uh and the other thing too they don't realize is that if you have more money you and if you're if you're generating profit in your business and you said you actually have you know money that you can use you can use that on an advertising budget to reach more people to help more people you can you can you know, you're not, you don't have money for Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever you, whatever have you, if you're not, if you don't have any money and people, they think like, oh man, if I'm making money, I'm somehow like, I'm misusing this gift, this spiritual practice or whatever you want to say. But it's, it's like, no guys, you need to have some money so you can reach more people because there's people out there who need your help and they won't find out about you if you don't ever advertise on Facebook or something like that. And you're never going to be able to advertise on Facebook if you don't have enough money for an advertising budget or helping uh, or hiring employees, hiring people who can help you out, you know, like you can't you can help more people if you're hiring assistants who can handle your calendar who can help you schedule your appointments who can run the technical side of your company and then you just focus on the coaching instead of doing everything you know what i mean like and you need money you need money to hire help to hire an assistant and they think of it like they're being selfish if they're making a lot of money but they they're not you're you're uh, you're you're helping more people you're if you if you have more money in your business. Did you deal with, with such type of, uh, of clients in the past? How did you deal with them? Because this is a lot of uh, psychological work. This is not just uh, giving them funnels and... <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, but that's what people need, man. And uh, it really comes back to that. It comes back to helping them see that they can help more people if they are making more money. Or like, for example, I... I, I, also, the other thing too is just just the way that our world works is that people take you more seriously if you are running a successful business. And that if your business is you know doing well and you are a person who has succeeded in the eyes of society, you will be taken more seriously. For better or for worse, and we can get into talking about the uh, yeah, money. The economy. This kind, this kind of bragging about your uh, financial status. I also don't think it's helpful, but uh, it's how the society perceives 
Yeah, and it's not bragging. Like, I'm not saying they should go out and say, oh, I made this much money or that much. Like, no, but it's just... Which we see uh, every single day. Yeah, like, let me put it this way. Like, something I really believe in is the law of attraction and that that is a real thing. And if I'm just some fucking dude who's never been successful and never had any... And I live in poverty... And I'm struggling to pay my bills, but I'm like, oh, the law of attraction's real. People are gonna be like, oh, it's fucking bullshit, obviously, because if it was if it was real, you would be successful, you'd be able to pay your bills, right? And you know what I mean? But if Elon Musk gets on stage and is like, guys, I think the law of attraction is a real thing and it's helped me to succeed, <laughs> people are gonna be like, oh my God, did you hear what Elon Musk said? He believes in the law of attraction. You know what I mean? And suddenly it's this big thing. So it's like, if you really want people to take you seriously, and not only that, if you want your ideas to have an impact, you need to, to be seen as someone who is like successful and competent. And yeah, I think most of, the, most of the coaches and people uh, in the digital world understand these things very well, but yeah. just at the level of understanding the, how, to, how to fill this gap between knowing the law of attraction, knowing the, the necessity of, of building real business and making it, it's, it's a total gap that it's uh, probably 99% of the online uh, entrepreneurs struggle to fill this gap. And, and my own, uh, my own uh, feelings are that this is the most important thing we should uh, teach people. And I, I'm uh, uh, thinking of finding ways to, to, to help them in, in the most easier and convenient way. Do, do you think that uh, you have something in place for, for this problem? You mean the gap of like knowing they should be yeah, believing? Yeah, the, the gap of, of doing? knowing and actually implementing it the, the right, the, the, the successful way because this is also a mix of spiritual, psychological problems, actual marketing strategies. So it's not possible if you teach people marketing strategies, probably 10% of them will get it, will implement and immediately will yeah. test. The other 90% will continue to struggle because they have other issues that have to be. For example, from my personal yeah. experience, my biggest problem was not implementing strategies. I'm good at uh, actually doing stuff, but my personal belief system, what I was uh, taught in school from my parents, from, from the whole path I have in life, it was very difficult to change these things from that I have to struggle to, uh, to find money to, to the place where I can believe that the money is abundant and you only have to yeah value and the money will come and this was yes. difficult and, that and that's i think that that's why it's important as a as a coach or a consultant to be able to have this relationship with your clients where you can kind of very gently nudge them along to understanding that they have all sorts of these limiting beliefs that they that they're, if for example, the reason that they are, uh, <laughs> the, you gotta find a way to sneak it in there in a nice way that slips under their radar uh, and help them to see that the real reason that they're not implementing this, the whatever strategy they know they should be doing, it's not because they don't have time, it's because something inside of them doesn't think they deserve success or something inside of them is sabotaging themselves. They're self-sabotaging because if someone tells you, Oh, I don't have time to do that. Or, Oh, I, I can't, I don't have the ability to do that or that won't work or whatever. What they're really saying is I'm not able to figure out a way to make that happen. I'm not able to figure out how to work that into my schedule. Why? Because I'm not good enough. I'm many, not. Many people subconsciously, yes. they are not good enough to, yes. to make it happen. And that's why 
uh, yeah, and it's hard. It, it is difficult. But I think that as a coach or a consultant, perhaps, you really need to be able to uh, well, first of all, I mean, there's plenty of people who make the argument of like, don't even work with people who aren't willing to do these things, who aren't already there. And, but personally, I'm someone who cares a lot about people, and I really do want to help those people to overcome their limiting beliefs and move past that. I think that that's as a, as a coach or a consultant, that's kind of your secret mission is to help people move past those kind of limiting beliefs or whatever. And I think that uh, you got to find ways to kind of, I mean, I personally, I've found like sharing my own story is very helpful of how, like if, if someone tells me a reason why they can't do something and I know that actually it's themselves holding themselves back, I can you say, oh yeah, I, I had that same sort of thing that I believed that it, it wasn't possible, but I dug down into why I thought it wasn't possible. And I found out that actually it was just that I didn't think that I could do it, or I didn't think that I deserved to do it, or I was somehow sabotaging myself. And that was my experience. And then sometimes it clicks for them and they say, oh man, I'm having, the, I'm doing that same thing. I'm yeah, this is very powerful. When yeah. people relate to, to your story, they can yeah. immediately click and uh, resolve yeah. uh, many, many things. Because and if I say to you, oh, hey, you have this problem. You're holding yourself back. You're doing it like this. This is wrong. You're doing this bad. Then you're immediately going to get all defensive. You're going to shut down. You're going to feel like you're being attacked. But if I open up and I say, yeah, man, I know. I know what you're talking about. Here's what worked for me, actually. That same thing. It's funny how this works, but just in my own story, um, I thought that I didn't have time to podcast every day. But actually, what I realized was that I just wasn't making time to podcast enough every single day. And if I, and I started digging into the reason of like, why, why didn't I have that time? Why wasn't I budgeting enough time to do that and making sure that I could fit into my schedule? And really, it was, I realized like I was, I was holding myself back. I was sabotaging myself. And I, it was because I really didn't think I even deserved success. I didn't think that I like could do it. I didn't think that the world wanted to hear me. I didn't think that I had a good message. Yeah, you know, and that's I all true. It's strange, but it's very often the case that we are we have fears from success, which is ridiculous. But but many many people have subconsciously fear of they being successful with what yep. they should be doing if if, if became successful. And they self sabotage prefer to stay at the lower level because it's easier for them to, to figure it out. <laughs> so Yep, I'm totally is, with you. Yeah, this is something very, very important. I'm totally with you, man. And hey, unfortunately, I got to wrap this up, but this has been yeah, yeah, it's, really it's fun. Yeah, fantastic man. talk. Yeah, dude. And, uh, and I'm very thankful for uh, giving this time uh, for our uh, conversation. And uh, I believe we will <laughs> do another uh, talk soon uh, and uh, we will talk in your show as well so thank you very much Paul for uh, giving this talk and uh, I'm excited and I'm uh, sure we will have another conversation because we cannot discuss everything in, in one single hour <laughs> yep sure. I love it that's for sure so thank you very much and uh, see you very soon see you soon man thank you bye bye Bye.